as I had stated a couple weeks ago, I wanted to do a video called In Defense of Aspartame, and this will be that video. Um, one of the problems, I think, with modern society is their idea of what's called naturalistic fallacy, the idea if something's natural, it's good for you. Uh, for example, that's why people were gobbling up, I think it was Coca-Cola that reintroduced Coca-Cola made with sugar instead of corn syrup. And people were like, oh, well, it's natural, so it must be good for me. Sugar is not exactly natural because of the refining process that's used to take it out of the cane or the beets, what have you. Um, but, or whatever else is being used to make sugar. Um, sugar is a very prevalent thing in the plant kingdom because it's what plants run on. But the thing is, this, this naturalistic fallacy is damaging to people. It's the same stuff that's behind the paleo movement and even the carnivore diet, although I, they're whacked if they think that humans are naturally carnivores. But the fact of the matter is, aspartame is one of the most well-researched foods that we eat. Um, and it is a food. It is, an, it is a condiment, but it is a food. Now... When I worked with overweight people, a lot of them would come up with excuses as to why they couldn't take in aspartame. Now, asper there are there is a group of people with a certain genetic disease that they cannot process phenylalanine, which is one of the amino acids in uh, basically in aspartame. Aspartame is two amino acids: aspartic acid and phenylalanine. And, um, and a small amount of sugar, dextrose. Um, so the, the, these are the ingredients in aspartame, okay? And the problem is that people cannot uh, wrap their head around the fact that this stuff is safe and it's, it's good. I mean, it might not, it's not the best thing for you, but it's not gonna hurt you. These things are in food. It's a lot less, it's actually a neutral substance in most people unless they have a disease that makes it so they can't process phenylalanine or any other amino acid. Perhaps they have a disease that where they can't pr process aspartic acid, though I never heard of it. But anything is possible. But the fact of the matter is, aspartame is neutral for the most part because it appears in any protein-rich food. Meats, dairy, cheeses, um, many protein-rich beans, these amino acids are in peas, uh, they're in protein-rich foods. So if you say you're against, um, if you're against, uh, what do you call it, NutraSweet, you must then, of course, be against meat, dairy, eggs, and other things containing these amino acids. I am against the things containing these other amino acids, but not because they contain these amino acids, <laughs> because they contain a lot of things that are very bad for you. Um, such as uh, saturated fat, cholesterol. Uh, they also contain a lot of um, uh, basically end products from the cooking, AGEs, from when you cook them and things like that that are not present in plant foods, especially plant foods that are cooked in a, a very um, conservative way through microwaving, stewing, or things of that nature. So my point is, is that this, this fear of the unnatural, the unnatural, is uh, absurd. I mean, the thing is, and you see this with like the eat clean diet, uh, the eat clean diet, a lot of people that say they're following that. I've never, I even bought the original book, the eat clean diet. I actually follow the, what would be considered a vegan version of the eat clean diet, according to the chick that originally made the diet Tosca Reno or something like that. Uh, Tosca, I'll, I'll find I'll, I'll find the book and put it in the description. The chick that originally wrote the Eat Clean Diet, I read it in like 2005 or six or whenever the hell it came out. I basically follow that diet and she made use of supplements such as creatine, alpha lipoic acid. These are not things that appear in nature. Um, this is the same foolishness with organic foods, how everything must be organic or you're going to drop dead if you don't eat organic foods. It's baloney, and what it does is it takes vegetables off the plate of many people. Now, how do I start my day usually, now that I'm back on a, pro, uh, a program? My day is started with a green drink that contains amino acids. What's in the green drink? Kale powder 
blueberry powder, pomegranate peel powder, lemon peel powder, um, and then the amino acids, glycine, glutamine, branch chain amino acids, including leucine, uh, L-citrulline, and taurine. And these, this is what I start my day with. It's a very low calorie uh, way to start my day. Instead of breakfast, I have this. And what do I sweeten it with? Well, I sweeten it with aspartame or saccharin. And I'm going to make another video on saccharin and why saccharin isn't going to kill you. Saccharin's a lot more iffy than, uh, than phenylalanine and aspartic acid. The reason why is because saccharin is a byproduct of coal tar manufacturing, and it doesn't have the clinical evidence that aspartame does. That's the thing with aspartame, is aspartame, if aspartame isn't safe for the majority of the population, except for those with that genetic disease, it would be mind-boggling after all the clinical research, the absolutely laboratory research. With saccharin, which I will make a video on saccharin, with saccharin, it's more population, uh, you know, well, populations that eat saccharin don't have any more incidence of cancer. There used to be a warning on saccharin products that stated that it could cause bladder cancer in laboratory animals. But being that they were observing the human populations consuming saccharin and they've done things like give tablet, and I'm, I'm not going to put links to this in the description, but the links to the aspartame will be in the description. Um, but they would give people tablets that were equal to like 300 sodas a day, uh, diet sodas a day, where Tab and Fresca used to be um, sweetened with uh, saccharin. And it didn't do no harm. Uh, but the other thing is the population research about populations that take saccharin, there's been no extra incidence of cancer. Um, I know a guy that's like 82, he's been eating saccharin every day because he's been on the Atkins diet for like 50 years. He's definitely not developed cancer and he's doing very well health-wise. Um, and that's what I mean. These things that people are saying are horrible for you and they're going to kill you because they're not natural. It's just not the case and people need to start looking at the evidence. And uh, that's all for this video.